null vector and unit vector null vector a vector whose modulus is zero a vector whose magnitude is zero whose modulus is zero whose modulus is zero is known as a null vector modulus p bar is equal to zero this is the modulus of a vector p bar if it is zero then it is called a null vector the direction cannot be determined for a null vector so the direction is indeterminate the direction cannot be determined it is indeterminate then unit vector a vector having magnitude of 1 is known as unit vector if the magnitude of a vector is unity it is called a unit vector a unit vector will be obtained by dividing the vector with its magnitude. So if p bar is a vector, the unit vector will be p bar by modulus p bar. p bar by modulus p bar gives unit vector. Generally modulus p bar will be represented by p. So the modulus will be represented by p. Hence it can be written as p bar by p. Here modulus p bar should not be 0. To obtain unit vector, modulus p bar should not be 0. Hence, p bar by modulus p bar gives unit vector. That means, a vector having magnitude unity along the same direction as the vector p bar. So, the unit vector has the direction of p bar, but its magnitude is 1. Unit vectors, orthogonal unit vectors. We represent three unit vectors along x, y and z axis. They are named as i, j, k. We take three unit vectors along x axis, y axis and z axis. The unit vector along x axis is termed as i small i. The unit vector along y axis is termed as j small j and the unit vector along z axis is taken as small k. These are known as unit vectors along x, y, z axis. Use of unit vectors. How the unit vectors are useful? The unit vectors are useful in representing a vector in terms of its components, x component, y component and z component. If there is a vector a bar whose x component is ax, y component is ay, z component is az, these are scalar quantities. Then the vector component along x axis is written as axi. The vector component of a bar along x axis is represented as axi. The y component of a bar is written as ayj. This is the vector component along y axis. The vector component along z axis is represented as azk. Axi ayj and azk are the components along x, y, z axis. So the vector a bar will be equal to axi plus ayj plus azk. Like this we represent a vector, we write a vector in terms of its components. Advantage of unit vectors. I will explain this. First let us try to understand the figure. Here I have taken two vectors a bar and b bar. I have constructed a bar plus b bar. a is represented from origin and b is constructed at the head of a bar and the vector with tail of a bar and head of b bar gives the resultant vectors that is represented by r bar. r bar is the resultant of a bar and b bar. Now let us write a bar and b bar in terms of their components in terms of their components the components of a are shown as ax and ay from the head of a a vertical dotted line is drawn and from y axis its distance is represented by ax this is x component of a bar similarly from the head of a bar a dotted line is drawn parallel to x axis the length of this, the height of this along y axis, the distance of this from x axis is given as a y. 
along y axis its length is ay so ax and ay represent the components of a bar ax is along x axis ay is along y axis so the vector a bar can be written as axi plus ayj the vector a bar can be represented as axi plus ayj now let us take the components of b from the head of b a dotted line is drawn vertically downwards and bx the x component of b will be from the dotted line at the end of a to the dotted line to the head of b that is represented by bx that is represented by bx another dotted line is drawn parallel to x axis from the head of b from the head of b the vector from the head of a to the head of b along y axis along y axis is represented by by so the vector from the horizontal dotted line from the top of a to the horizontal line to the dotted line to the top of b is by now b bar can be written in terms of its components b bar is equal to bxi plus byj b bar is equal to bxi plus byj now r bar is equal to rx bar x component of r bar is equal to ax plus bx r component of x is equal to rx rx is equal to ax plus bx and ry is equal to ay plus by ry is equal to ay plus by like this we find the components of r along x axis and y axis then by computing rx and ry by constructing rx plus ry we will get the vector r bar which we are going to study now we have seen rx is equal to ax plus bx and ry is equal to ay plus by therefore r bar is equal to rxi plus ryj r bar is equal to rxi plus ryj x component is rxi y component is ryj so vector r bar will be, is equal to rxi plus ryj therefore r is equal to square root of rx square plus ry square r is equal to square root of rx square plus ry square and the angle made by r with x axis angle made by r with x axis is given is given by theta and tan theta is given by ry by rx tan theta is equal to ry by rx gives the angle made by r bar with x axis like this by using the components we can find resultant of any number of vectors the resultant of any number of vectors can be obtained by using the components